Welcome everyone, this is Coaching In Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're going to be talking about fitness and life coaching and then everything else in between that can happen in your life. Because sometimes in life, things are not going to go perfectly as we might want them to go. Something might happen. We call it a trauma, we call it a challenge, we call it a struggle, we call it a hardship. I mean, there's so many different names that we can give our situation. What are we doing about it? Sometimes people, they stop, they freeze. Think about it when you're like a young kid. I know this happened when I was, you know, probably in elementary school where I would have a dream and then I was either running and I stopped or I tried to run and I couldn't even move. It was almost like the fear immobilized me. I couldn't take action. Sometimes in our life, that fear can become a reality even as an adult. I don't have that anymore. I don't have those dreams anymore. And even as an adult, when I have to move forward, I understand I only have to do one step. And the moment I take one step, I keep on moving. That one step can be the scariest step that you might have to ever take in your whole entire life. Because what's on the other side? Are you going to win or are you going to lose? Let's give ourselves the aspect that we're going to win. What would happen if we continually took those steps toward a better life, a better future? Would we get the results that we're looking for? If we look at the statistics, we are going to grow, we are going to change. But then at the same time, most people don't even take that one step. How can we start to take that one step? And today is going to be a wonderful episode, a wonderful interview with my guest, Kemper Woodruff, because he's going to be helping us understand something, that we can take that step, that no matter what's happening in our life, we can come out victorious in the sense that we gave every bit of ourself, that we decided to derive action from inaction, to take away the fear from our life and become mobile again, because we don't have to be frozen and stuck in place. We can continue to move toward the directions in life that we would like to be in. Not everyone knows exactly where they want to be quite yet, but then that's the power of coaching. This interview is going to be a great tool, some great insight for you to take the first steps on your journey if you have not done so. And if you have already taken those steps because you have been listening to the podcast, listen to this episode and become reignited and invigorated so you can choose to do more in your day. Welcome Kemper Woodruff to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Mike. Of course. Today, we're going to be talking about your work. You are in the world of fitness and life coaching. And our world needs coaches in general, because if we look at what's happening in the schools and what's happening in the world, there's so many distractions and we need a bit more focus. And typically, life coaches, mindset coaches, you know, like the word is just used in unison. It's to help people get on track, stay on track and to create more meaning in their life. And I know fitness can be the key for a lot of people to invigorate themselves to say, okay, this is gonna be the start. Sometimes it could be something else, but most of the time, I would say probably 70% of the time, fitness is probably the key to get people on track to changing and elevating their life. But let's start to look at your journey, your story. In your own words, can you tell the world who you are, what you do and how you help? Well, my name is Kemper Woodruff, as your listeners now know, and really I'm happy that you touched on kids and like high school, getting out of high school. It's really about pivot points. People do pretty good at coasting once they have everything set up for them and have a structure. But when they lose structure, it's a pivot point in life. I don't care if that's you graduating high school, if that's you getting out of prison, if that's you leaving the military, if that's you changing careers, it's a pivot point. Now, you're talking about fitness and life coaching as well and how they're kind of tied together. And that's because fitness is the gateway to a healthy self-image. And when you have these pivot points, that's when your bad habits are really going to show up for you in your life. When you revert back to that default programming, whatever your base level of self-love really is, based on the image you hold for yourself, right? And those goals and standards that are requirements that are ingrained in you. That's where your life is either going to go up or backslide quickly. Does that make sense? 
No, it makes sense. When we start to look at the next step, though, right, the pivot points, why are people not doing the pivots correctly, though, and they're just going in a direction that is not beneficial to them? People don't understand the way that self-image works with the subconscious mind. There's a fantastic book called Psycho-Cybernetics that really blew the doors off for me. And to kind of tie this in with my life story, I had been in a car accident when I was, I believe, 26. And it took me two years to really like recover from it. They kept discovering all these different aspects of it that were wrong with me and couldn't kind of figure out where it was coming from because it was a combination of through going to the chiropractor, they discovered I had broken two discs. And me being such a bro, I totally didn't even think about a concussion. But not only did I have a concussion, but they thought that I also had a CSF leak, which is the synovial fluid that holds your brain in your head floating. And they think that my brain was actually resting on the skull, pulling all the nerves at the back of my head, presenting very similar symptoms to like traumatic brain injuries. So it was a combination of a brain injury uh, with another layer to it that we didn't discover until later. But through this process, I realized that my life had changed. And all of a sudden, all these aspects of my self-image started to present themselves because I was just eroding. I lost so much muscle doing some of the procedures that I had done. I was laying in bed for like three weeks at a time. And I found myself at like 110, 115 pounds. And I really had to reinvent myself. It's like, well, I got to get back in the gym. My back is not going to get stronger on its own. I've tried to do this, you know, kind of wishy-washy, okay, I'll go to, you know, physical therapy and shout out to all the people trying to help me. I've used some of those tools and integrated them into my program as needed just to strengthen the foundation of my body. But I really needed strength, not only spiritually, but physically. And I realized those two things kind of merged and I was listening to audiobooks at the time to get me through it. And so I stumbled across Psycho Cybernetics. Now, in Psycho Cybernetics, he start he was the dude that wrote it. He was a surgeon, a cosmetic surgeon, and he couldn't figure out why these beautiful people wanted to get surgery. And he was like, I need to take a deep dive into self-image and figure this out. And what he discovered is that your mind works with definite goals that you have based about the feeling that you have when you see yourself, right? So you have this vision of yourself and your subconscious is always taking a score of are my actions and the intentions and directions that I'm being given by my spirit in alignment with me becoming that. And so at a pivot point in someone's life, they're not pivoting right because they have no real finite goal. They don't understand because they're thinking a goal is a finish line. Goal isn't a finish line. It's a checkpoint. You get to the checkpoint, you refresh yourself, and you continue onward to the next leg of the journey, right? But people have this thought that when I'm successful, I'm going to do less. When I'm successful, I've made it. I can kick my feet up finally, right? And that's just a facade. That's not how it's going to be because that's a broke mentality. That's a poor person's mentality. You don't get to be rich without giving value. And in your life, you're going to build who you feel you are based on the image you have in your head and the actions that affirm that image or deny that. Is this all making sense? I do want to dive into the idea of if we look in the mirror, you know, like the self-image aspect and we see something we don't like, do we just change it on the surface level rather than going internally and fixing the things that are broken because we can just give ourselves the idea of body positivity of life positivity everything is going to be okay you know have an optimistic type of mindset but without action i mean it's going to be nil so many people they wait for superman to come save them or they you know take the easy road but the easy road typically comes with a plethora of issues down the road and they are okay with it because it makes them happy for the moment. Well, you're talking about both a, a delusion and escapism. Mm. Now, I think what coaching really is, is someone coming in and being this voice of positivity, 
giving you positive habits as a substitute for your negative habits. And what those positive changes are going to do is cause you to focus so much in order to get those done because you're integrating a whole new way of living, right? And so at first, it's going to feel like a bunch of responsibilities, like, oh, my God, I got to do this. Oh, my God, I got to do that. And you're kind of juggling. Then you start to hit this stride where you're like, okay, I think I got it. And the results are kind of peeking out at you. And life is still going on. You still have all your responsibilities and day-to-day stuff happening. Now, that's time with this good habit. You're developing that neurological pathway, this new lifestyle for yourself, until you hit the landmine of life, which is going to be something that triggers you into a negative emotional state. When you're in a low vibration, you're going to start seeing everything in your life differently. So the coach really just gives you time between your bad habit re-emerging while practicing a good habit. And then once you get knocked off your high horse, all of a sudden, he goes, yes, you did. Now accountability comes in. Get back up. Start again. Now you start again and you wind up going longer. You get more distance between you and that old way of being. Because it's not just a way of living, it's a state of being that you're in and that you're holding yourself in. That's why success isn't necessarily monetary, isn't necessarily monetary. No more than strength is associated to a weight. It's not about the pounds. It's about the willingness to go within and endure the struggle. Because just like the body in the gym, it's all a metaphor for life. As I'm lifting a weight, What that pain really is, is accelerated growth. It is an indicator of growth exceeding your current limitations. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a lot of changes that are hard at first, but we all have a different method of escapism. And it doesn't matter what it is, you can fix it with these same things. And the foundation of that is going to be self-love, being able to trust your word, and having actions that affirm what you're actually saying and striving to do. And that's where the gym comes into play. I do want to look at the aspect of different positive habits and then negative habits, because I know for us, we might be able to just know what's a positive habit and what's a negative habit. But if you're living in something, think of it as like you're in a bad situation. It could just be your lifestyle, like a kid growing up, for example. They might grow up very poor, uh, no electricity, no water. In their mind, this is life, you know, like everything is perfect. Maybe on their birthday, they get a, you know, a liter of soda and like a little cake. It means the world to them. Yet, you know, we can jump to our side of the world. And if we have a liter of soda and a small cake, you know, the kid is probably entitled and, you know, probably throwing a tantrum and wondering why they're not at Chuck E. Cheese or something. We can have different situations, but... I want to, you know, ask you, well, what are positive habits or and and what are negative habits? Is this something that's universal or is it going to be something that's going to be independent to each individual? Positive habits are universal because it comes down to not only the intention, but the byproduct, like the result of the action, right? A positive habit is going to have a positive outcome inherently. Just like a negative habit will deteriorate whatever you know, aspect of its life that it's touching over time and being expressed in. To touch on life being all roses and to give your your listeners some background on me, I've been in, th- in some incredibly hard times in my life. And I didn't know my life coaching was really going to kind of start when I was 19, I would say, because my best friend was actually murdered and he was shot and killed. And when that happened, that not only changed my entire life and the trajectory that I was on because I was selling weed and kind of running around in the streets. I wanted to quick money was ruling my life more than anything and not wanting to deal with processual progress. I had no respect for a step by step progression. I wanted it now. I was looking for the big come up, right? That's how so many of us live. And it wasn't that I didn't have, you know, healthy role models. I had an unhealthy self-image because someone with a positive self-image isn't going to allow certain things. And when you don't have a positive place to be, right, a place where you can be yourself, feel yourself and progress, you are inherently going to be hurting your life and endangering someone else's because 
someone who doesn't value their own life is a very dangerous person to be around. And that's what we're dealing with with a lot of people in these pivot points of life. And maybe they never got that love. And I've had points in my life where I was broke when I had this injury from the car accident. I had to take off from work and I wasn't able to work. Now, not only was I only making maybe like 20 an hour, right? But I'm getting 60, 70 percent of what that was just through my insurance. I was living on like 15 to 1800 bucks a month for like two years. I could go into the store and literally not be able to afford a bag of Lay's and a soda. It was I'm buying a drink or I'm getting something to sustain myself. I understand it on both sides of the fence, but what this really boils down to is there's going to be a mindset that you have to have and have to adopt, and it's going to have to also have habits that coincide with it. Otherwise, it's delusional and things aren't going to get better. No matter how good you tell yourself it's going to be, it's not until you start taking tangible actions to get you those results. And for me, little things, especially in like pivot points, when traumatic things happen, side note, during that time, my father also died in a car accident. I'm going through all this. You wake up one day, there's your parent. Bye. My stepmom, I'm still in court with her. She's tried to take everything. Right. And I don't say this as like a woe is me, but like life keeps happening. It's not going to stop. I also found out, surprise, you're going to be a dad. All during this time where it's like, I was bedridden when I found that out. If I don't do something to strengthen myself, I can't even hold my child. And most people are waiting till rock bottom, just like I found myself at rock bottom to redefine myself. And you go, whoa, I am healthy. I am not broken. I am not a drug addict, whatever it is. And now you give yourself a clear goal. Okay, well, what does healthy look like for me? Maybe for one person, it's I'm not a drug addict. Maybe healthy for someone else is, okay, I can run a marathon, whatever it is, people give themselves these goals that are tangible, and your subconscious will drive you to that with actions. But it doesn't happen by accident. And people are generally waiting for their life to get really bad before they get motivated about making it good rather than becoming, you know, positively motivated, being like good can be better. Very true. People wait until that trauma hits and then they say, oh, wait, I had to take action. Yet today, you know, we can take the action. And I think that's where life coaching really has some power because we not only help you take the action more readily, but we present it in a way that's going to be manageable and palatable for you to do it. Because people think the starting point and the end point, it could be a huge gap. And they don't see it as a step by step thing. They just see it as one mountain to the next. And it seems almost impossible to the mind because the mind loves to conserve energy. It loves to, you know, be comfortable. And you have to get uncomfortable and you have to expend energy in order to make some change to happen. We have to go against the mind, yet the mind is doing what it does best, keep us alive. But being alive today has a different meaning. What about passion? You know, like going after your zone of genius, figuring out what you were meant to do in the world, right? The purpose. Most people don't even know what they should be doing or what their life means. They just kind of go to a nine to five and they keep doing it. And then they find themselves in hard times and they're like, I don't know what to do. It's a common thing where individuals choose to struggle. They don't choose the benefit or the opportunity to enhance themselves. They always wait. Yes, there can be times when that trauma can be a good thing and they uplift themselves. But I tell people, why go through that trauma? Why go through that struggle when you can take action now? The positive habits that we can be giving ourselves can be fitness, understanding yourself, being more mindful, living in the moment, paying attention to the people that love you and that you love, giving more effort in your day, staying away from things that have a negative effect on you, like cell phones, social media. Those things can be a good thing to be connected to people maybe across the world that you need to be connected with, family, whatever. But then is it also a distraction? When you were going through your recovery, right, the two years in recovery, 
Did you find yourself with distractions in front of you or did you find only opportunities in front of you? I'm an eternal optimist, but I was truly broken and I had habits that were defeating me. Part of that, and in particular for me, was smoking weed. Weed was my form of escape. And it did help mask pain in one sense, but the pain didn't really go anywhere. It also made me very content with the concept of something. Like, you get stoned, you you can have some great ideas, man. Don't get it wrong. But how many of those ideas really see the light of day past that moment? Not a ton of them, right? I look at life as us clinging to levels until we understand it's about leveling up. And that's what the mind really does. We are talking about we get kind of locked in. It's an identity thing, right? We cling to this level like a child holding on to a blanket scared to go to school. And this level is everything to us. But in order to get to the next level, you have to sacrifice what you have on this level. And so there's people that live a, a life of servitude and are willing to devote themselves to this path. And they can only do that through gaining confidence in themselves. Because for a portion of the journey, you're going to be like, am I really who I say I am? Mm -hmm. When you're like trying to gauge based on these exterior results, you might not have the trophy yet, but you need to know that you're the champion already. And Life is no different than that kind of competition. Although I believe there's no real competition in creativity, we're all inspired and no one can do what you do like you do when you do it. But you got to have your mojo right. And at the end of the day, people that aren't confident in themselves are going to cling to whatever accolades they have to justify their position. I'm like, I don't care what position we put you in or that we find you in you're going to be able to get into another one. You're going to be able to level up. It's never going to define you. I'm successful without a million dollars because guess what? I was able to find happiness while I was broken by who I was as I was going through this struggle, by who I'm creating myself. My mom always used to tell me, it's not who you are on a good day that defines you. It's who you are on a bad day. In life, there's going to have some bad days. There's going to have some hard seasons, you know, but that's not the totality of your experience. And it's on you. It's on you to find that. And if you can't find it within yourself, you need to find someone that can see it within you. That's the whole aspect of coaching. That's what I bring to this is like, who'd have known that as a 19 year old kid, my life coaching career starts with me trying to console my best friend's mother about losing her son and all the kids in the neighborhood that just lost the person they looked up to, the strongest person that they knew. And I'm going to school at the time. I'm having parties at my house so people can come over because I didn't know anything about coping. I'm trying to figure out what happened to my best friend. And I'm not the only one who's lost someone to the streets, but I'm just saying I was bringing people in as like a community and trying to give them a place to stay, thinking it would uplift them. At the time, Ty Lopez had just come out with a lot of his programs. I swear I gave like five or it was either 500 or like $3,000, some, somewhere in there for these programs. I was constantly trying to figure out like an alternative to give to the people around me. Now, of course, giving a seminar in your kitchen, smoking blunts while all we got is saltines to eat is not the most glorious start to life coaching and it didn't really give the best results. But I kept chiseling away at this. Because I knew there was something to this. There's something to this. And at that time, you know, survival can be a weird thing, you know? And uh, one of the things that I did at that time, because I had, I was broke. I was broke. I could afford maybe like 10 bucks a day for food, 10, 20 bucks. Because honestly, we were smoking everything. I was selling weed, but we were smoking every bit of it, just trying to stay sane. And I would make sure that I went to the store just to talk to somebody. And when I walked through the store, I would look and I would spend that $20 like 20 times. I'd be like, well, I can get this, this, and this. And I just got so thankful over the fact that that someone's whole job was to give me an option. And that's what life coaching is. We're stocking the grocery of life. Anything you're trying to make, the ingredients, we're putting them on the shelves. 
And some people are going to come in. Some people are going to buy it. Some people can't afford it. There's going to be some lucky lose. Some people are going to try and steal it. But at the end of the day, that's not what matters. I gave you an option. And I was so thankful when I would go through that line because that one person that I would talk to didn't know nothing about what I was going through. And I would just tell them, thank you for being here to help me. And they thought I was just talking about them scanning groceries. No, I'm talking about thank you for my well-being because in my home, in my head, this was a trap. That was a prison of pain and I was locked in and I couldn't figure out how to get myself out. But when I went out into the world, everything was okay. And what was I really doing though, Mike? I was trying to sustain myself. I was trying to feed myself. I was doing something physically good to honor this because I couldn't find it in here. My heart was broke, man. I didn't have no money. I was struggling just like everybody else around me. But I knew that I'm not that. I'm infinite. Why? Because every time I'm broken, I still wake up. There's still a voice in me that won't give up on me. And that's in you. That's what everybody's spirit is calling them to, bro. And that's why I can talk to that. All that other stuff is a facade. I'm digging down in there. I want you to go to that place where you feel helpless and realize in the gym, you can always affect change. You can always do one more thing to strengthen your position, to strengthen yourself, to make yourself better. There's things in life you're not going to be able to directly change. You're going to have to go through it. It's going to have to play itself out. But you can get better. It's a That pain is a purification process, and it's going to burn away all those aspects of your consciousness, just like a rocket going into space. There's things that are going to fall off. I think Tyler Perry said that, so shout out to Tyler Perry and his speech on that one. But All of that was powerful because we all have our, our journey, and it's interesting how people would judge another person because of their journey, what they did or what they went through, and they can easily say, well, I never did this, so... You should have done it too, because I had a rough life and and yes, you had a rough life too, but they immediately go with comparing. They compare themselves to whoever, but yet I find the most powerful coaches, especially coaches, are the ones who have gone through it and got out of it, who have realized the message that was right in front of them, that they can be powerful, that they can change, that they can enhance themselves. Individuals who are stuck and they're looking for help and they get someone who has a perfect, pristine life. You know what the first thing their mind is going to tell them? Well, you don't understand what I went through or what I'm going through. How can you even tell me that things are going to be okay, that I can get out of this situation? Yet here you are, you're a testament to that. And that's powerful that we can have individuals that have walked the walk and now they can talk the talk. I always talk about this on the podcast. I would rather have people on my team, coaches, mentors, guides, who have a battered and bruised set of armor than someone who is a knight in shining armor, is brand new, never been in battle before. I don't care about that person, to be honest. I want the person who has went through it. I want the person who struggled because that person understands something that the person that didn't have to go through it won't until they have to go through it too. It's that hardship. It's that hard moment. Think of it as, you know, going to the gym and using that as an analogy. You have all of these weights in front of you. Let's say you have a five pound dumbbell and I know they have 2.5s and stuff like that. Five pound dumbbell and you have a hundred pound dumbbell, right? The hundred pound dumbbell might be out of reach right now. So we pick up the five, right? We work with the five a little bit. We get stronger. You see a person on the other end, and they're lifting up those hundreds like you know, it's their job and they can do it easily. And you aspire to be that. But then you can also look at where you are and you can look at each sequential weight. You got your five, your tens, your fifteens, twenties, and, you know, you know, like your 22.5s and we keep going up and then we get to that hundred. But the goal is the hundred, but it doesn't mean that's where we stop. We get there. We don't say, well, now I'm in shape. Now I can do what that other guy did. So I should feel good about myself. Life is not only about what you can do, it's about who you can also help up, who you can uplift. We are not here, like if you think about it, we are not here to be by ourselves in these lone warriors as you were in your kitchen and and with your community when you had lost your best friend, you united. Yet today, most people have a one-man army mentality. I can do this by myself, but yet 
you do things so much more readily and more efficiently and effectively when you do it together. Going back to that five pound to that hundred pound analogy, what would happen if you talk to that guy down at the end when he's lifting that hundred pound weight or after he's done, you don't want to bother him during his set. You would say, tell me about your journey. Tell me about your story. And you will learn that it wasn't all rainbows and gumdrops. And he walked into the gym one day and he lifted up the hundred pound and he said, yeah, you know, I can do it. He started somewhere. He might've started at the fives, he might've started at the tens, but he built himself up. And many people, they fail to understand that you have to build yourself up. They want the quick fixes. They want everything. You uh, said, I think it's like the come up or the fast money. We all want it. But if you get it, I can almost guarantee you that you won't keep it. We need to have that journey of resilience so we can have the retention. We can retain what we've earned. It's not about, here, I'm going to give you a million dollars. I'm going to give you an opportunity. And then you're going to take it and you're going to be successful. Many people who give themselves this mentality are going to find themselves always on the bottom of the barrel wondering when is their next chance for a handout. The scraps that are going to be thrown at them. Yes, they're going to have a good moment. But how long does that moment last? It doesn't last for long. And this is the power of life coaching. We not only help you or give you the aspect of, you know, feeding yourself, you know, mentally, physically, but we teach you how to do it day in and day out by yourself. Because the goal for life coaching in general typically is, I want you not to need me, but I understand right now I'm walking with you and we're going to walk together until I can set you free. One of the reasons why my logo is a bird is because even when I was a teacher, the first year I was a teaching, I didn't want to let the kids go. You know, like, I, you know, I spent all this time with them, teaching them and educating them. And then I didn't realize that they had, a, you know, their own life to live. Who was I to keep them captive? So now I have a hands-off approach. You come and you can leave. You take what you need. And then at, at the end of it, you're equipped. And it's always funny because I know some people, they like me when they do coaching with me. So they like to stay with me. And then like I kick them out and I'm like, listen, you're ready. You're good. You know, live. And then that right there is so powerful then because then a year later, they always text me back. They were like, hey, I just want to give you an update on everything that's going on. And it's amazing how quick they can change your life as long as they were given a track to stay on. Most people are trying to find what track to stay on. And then sometimes they stumble on it. Sometimes they don't. I do want to talk about the idea of finding your why or your purpose, because because this is something that people need to realize because they're not going to take action if they don't have that within them or in front of them or an understanding of it, because we all have a purpose, but not yet everyone knows it. You read my mind. When you find your why, time is irrelevant. What that 100 pound lifter would say to the dude on the five pound weight is enjoy it. If he really loved it, if he really valued it, what got him there, enjoy that process. That's what all the greatest bodybuilders will say. I loved it. I was in there because I loved getting a little better. I loved testing myself. Time didn't exist when I was there, right? And that's really the beauty of physical expenditure. You're going to anchor your consciousness into your body. And that can go way into stuff that I've learned with like yoga and breath work and centering yourself. But rather than digress on that point, when you find your why, the time it takes doesn't matter. I was so broken that it was like to lift my daughter. I don't care if I have to be in that gym a million hours. I was going two times a day and I was that guy with the five, the 10, the 15. But it, that didn't matter. All of a sudden, because my, my homies were studs in high school. They were benching 265, 320. I was like, am I supposed to be doing that? I was scared of it. I was scared of the very thing that was going to help me and save my life. How funny is that? But that's how it is for everyone. So if you're listening and you're scared, good. That's going to save your life. You might not even understand it right now, but the process will reveal the purpose. Perspective is the most expensive thing in the whole universe. Because it costs you your innocence, 
when you were talking about the difference between one coach versus another, the knight in shining armor versus the the tattered warrior, right? It's right there. I don't have a level of innocence that other people have. I understand it. That's the thing about like karmic cycles and stuff and really understanding that people live with this this conditional mindset until they elevate into a spiritual way of being and living, right? Until they really know who they are, the spirit that lives in here that's guiding you, right? Who you came to be through this process, that's going to be revealed as you keep going. Because when you got to dig deep into yourself and you realize, I'm going to be the person that gives trust and says, yes, I'll trust you. I'll love you if you obey these considerations. Someone's going to betray that trust. And just like that, it's going to turn around and someone's going to do the same thing to you and you're going to betray their trust. And all that happens in that cycle, that karmic cycle, time after time after time, until you realize love exists on the other side of that sand. Where you drew the line and said, I'll go this far, love is on the other side of that. And you're going to understand that you are that person just like that person's you. So I can recognize your bad behavior because I've exhibited it. I know what that is. And once you elevate out of that cycle, you go, I know both sides of this, but I choose not to be a part in that way. Now, all of a sudden, you've gone out of physicality, which is pool ball A, bang, hits pool ball B, bang, hits pool ball C, right? Now you're transmuting energy. Pool ball A hits pool ball B. Pool ball B chooses not to move. Someone does something negative to you. And now all of a sudden I take that energy and I spin it. And what you get is a byproduct of love. And that's what your hardship's teaching you right now. And there's people that need to be coached through that because the tangible reality is, part of my language, it's fucking heartbreaking, man. And when someone's broken, the last thing they want to be around is someone that has everything going right for them. That's guilt and shame. That's why addicts hang out with addicts. That's all that is. It's I, I don't want to be seen by you. I'm hiding myself. This isn't me. And I know it deep down inside myself. That's why I can't be around you, although I love you. I love you too much to see me not being who I am. I hurt that bad. That's like when an animal's hurt. It won't spend time with you. It'll move away. And when you love somebody, you got to have those open arms and you got to be prepared because it don't mean you're not going to get bit trying to love on this this animalistic state that we're finding ourselves in. Because our physicality is the furthest extension of our consciousness. That's when when someone dies, when you really see a dead body, no one looks at a dead body and goes, yep, they're still in there somewhere. No, they go, he's gone. She's gone. They're not in there. Why? Because your body isn't who you are. It's the vehicle that carries who you really are. This is a soul thing, brother. That's what I care about. I never want nobody to feel what I felt. And I have open arms. I'll go back and save as many people as I can. Man, I get emotional about this because like, this is where I go in the gym. I pull all you in. Anybody listening that needs another something, I'm doing a rep for you. I'm doing a rep for all the days that like, I wish I could just readily see my daughter, right? And I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that has people they wish they could hug. Maybe their dad's in the military. Maybe their dad's in the pen, right? Maybe their mom's on the street. Who knows? But it's like, you want you want that so bad, but you can't reach it. But you can reach this. And I'm gonna be better by the time they see me again. And all of a sudden, as you're doing it, you start realizing, oh shit, I did it for me. I ain't, look at me. I'm not what is on me. I'm lifting it off me. And that weight's heavy, but that's life. You reminded me of uh, when my wife wanted to get in shape early on in our marriage, we would go to the gym. And when we would get to our, you know, our 15 or 12, whatever rep it was, she would always do one more, we would call out another one, you know, do it for your mom, do it for your dad, do it for your brother, your sister, whoever, right? And it's powerful, because now we're not only doing it for ourselves, we're in this fight together. And in life, we are 
together. And, and, and we have to understand that if you go to a grocery store, like this is the analogy I like to use. If you go to a grocery store, you didn't grow those, you know, foods that you're getting, the tomatoes, the peppers, the romaine lettuce, the apples, the peaches, you know, like you didn't grow them. Someone else did the work and they, you know, brought, you know, like, you know, they went through the whole process. They're in the store now for your consumption to give you the energy that you need to fight going on in your day. We don't see that. We just see like, okay, I'm going to go to work, get a paycheck that I earned, and I'm going to use the money that I earned to buy the food that is now mine. We live in a very me, me, me world when we can start to look at us, what can we do together? That's more powerful. And our conversation today is, it was an extremely powerful conversation. And I encourage everyone to actually rewind this. And if I don't do it, I'm sure Kemper is going to do it. He's going to probably create some clips because this powerful clips there, you know, of him just speaking, just dropping the truth bombs, because this is what we need. We need those, you know, these aspect of like speech or quotes, whatever you want to consider it to, you know, reignite what's within us. We all have a fire. Sometimes, you know, that fire might be almost dead, but it's still warm. But if you put some stuff on it, some, you know, some dry kindling, some dry grass or some leaves, it's going to smolder up and eventually you're going to have a huge flame on your hand. What do you do with it? Some people are going to let it die again. Episode right here, I'm sure it's igniting something within you, right? I can feel it. But what do you do with this flame? Do you just look at it and say, whoa, this flame is nice, it's good? Or do you just look at it and, and say, okay, well, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this like momentum. It's like you have the brakes on. Inquire about coaching. Inquire about how you can unlock your full potential. Figure out what is the next step. Because if you feel stuck, that's a short tell sign that you need some assistance. Don't stay in the position that you are because you feel like there's no other alternative. There is always another choice. You can give up, you can give in, or you can choose to get out. I encourage everyone to get out, to do what they have to do to reach the next level again and again and again. From there, you're going to start to see that life has more meaning than what you're giving it right now. You don't have to just settle for whatever you're getting. Settle for an opportunity right now that you can choose to, to take action. Settle for the mindset that you're not going to give up. Settle for the goal that you're going to keep giving yourself goals when you reach the goal that you have finally given yourself. Settle does not have to be that you settle for less. You always can choose the better option, the more option. And our conversation today is definitely of one of hope, is one of invigoration, of motivation, of inspiring individuals to take action and to see what they're capable of. And I just love to have conversations with other life coaches and fitness coaches and mindset coaches because it helps me understand that we're all in the same work together, right? My business and what we do here is not only the business in the world that's you know trying to help people make the ripple effect. Everyone has a part. Everyone's a part of this play and everyone's trying to enhance everyone. So that's always good. And this is why I love this platform, Coaching and Sessions, bringing on other wonderful coaches like yourself and, you know, instilling that I might not be someone's cup of tea and that's fine, but Kemper might be everyone's cup of tea. And that's great. We are still making an impact. And that's what I love to see. As we begin to wrap up, Kemper, I would love to get some final words from you and then for you to tell the audience where they can find you. Yeah. So for final words, take that spark and whatever flame you got. Light your torch for the day and take it as far as you can. And when it goes out, understand you're going to have to light it again. You're going to have to start keeping it lit. And all these programs work together. My mom always used to tell me when the student is ready to learn, the teacher appears. And I'm working on getting some freebie stuff together and some, some courses put together that I can offer people from different areas that aren't at the bedrock of what I'm doing right now, but things that I've learned along the way that were incredibly helpful, things that might incorporate yoga and meditation. So that way you're not only stimulating your system physically, but you're having a way to unwind as well and really go through introspection in a deep way, really rewire your actual nervous system and get your brain ready to produce more uh, neuroproteins to really rewire you. Right. 
that's for another podcast. But I just want to let people know they can find me on Instagram at Kemper Woodruff. You know, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to hear what you're going through and see if there's any way that I can help you out. Perfect. Sounds great. And I'll definitely make it easy one for for everyone. All the links are going to be in the description box below. Follow him on Instagram. Learn more about what he's doing. I'm sure he's going to get me some stuff because the episode is going to take some time to edit. But when that episode comes out, be ready to take action because when we are on the mission of our life, we might be convoluted in all the things that we can be doing. But if we give our focus on the true mission to what is us, we're going to start to have that focus of our why, that purpose that we might be always running around. And I know it happened to me at one point in my life. It was like I was always running around my purpose. And I just needed a coach, a mentor, someone that has done it before, that can see what I couldn't see to say it's right there in front of you. And I believe Kemper is going to be that guiding light, that guide to say, hey, it's right there. So if you're struggling, if you're someone who just needs you know someone to talk to so you can begin that journey check out the links they're there they're there to help you to better life and to a more prosperous future you don't have to be where you are you don't have to stay where you are most people think that they like this life is my life and i have to be stuck here but that is so far from the truth you get to choose your limits most of the time the world's going to try to give you limits but you just have to continue to shatter them Life coaching is going to be the tool to help you, that glass breaker that's going to shatter every single limit that people, that the world gives you, and that even yourself might give you. So learn to break the limits, learn to dive into the mind and the body that you need to recover from all of the traumas that you might be going through, you might go through. Don't stay there. Don't settle for less. Settle for more. Thank you so much, Kemper, for coming on, spending some time, and talking about your work, of course. Thank you, Mike. It was a pleasure, brother. All right, everyone. I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in to that interview of my guest, Kemper Woodruff. As you can see, great guy, great gentleman, and we had a lovely conversation. It was almost like two friends coming after a long time and just kind of meeting and chilling and having a good time, even though it's the first time we have ever met. And I love these organic conversations. I don't like okay, we talked before and then now we know what we're going to talk. We wrote it all down. These are the questions I'm going to ask you. I don't even know what questions I'm going to ask all my guests. Yes, why I'm listening to them. I'm also thinking about possible questions, but I'm not saying, okay, that's a question I'm going to ask them. Some things I write down and when I write down stuff, you can see is basically wonderful things that they say. I'm like, whoa, that's like super good. Those wonderful things are like the seeds, the sparks, the uh, mojo, if you want to call it that, that changes everything. I love to look at the aspect of our life and the goals that we're going after as something that we look forward to. Most people, when they wake up in the morning, they are hitting this news button. They're like, I have to go to work and things along those lines. I forget where. But someone asked me about Monday the other day, and I'm thinking in my head, Monday, like, what kind of question is that? And then it hit me. People don't like Mondays. And I'm thinking in my head, like, Mondays are a great day. They're like every day of the week, you know, for me, because I work seven days out of the week. You know, for me, it's just like, why don't you like Mondays? Or why do you wait for Fridays? I mean, it is all something that we look forward to. And the more I do, like, the podcasting and I speak with people, and I mean, some you know, some guests are, you know, going to be, have their own personality that might be different than my personality. And it's perfectly fine, right? Because again, coaching and session is not for me. It's for you. It's for all the people in the world. Because that guest that might not resonate with me might resonate with someone else. And I'll tell you, Kemper, we resonated because it was just like real after real after real. And I mean, I grew up in the hood. I know all of that. What happened? Losing friends and things along those lines. I know I don't talk about it a lot, but it's real. It's real for a lot of people. And sometimes in those situations, when you have to look at how far you have to climb up to rags to riches, the stories of like 50 Cent and, you know, like rappers and where they started and where they are now, they're blessed, right? In a sense, people, they want that same blessing for themselves, but they don't understand that sometimes you have to do some type of action. Lil Wayne, for example, he did music. 
he kept on with the music. He would do something like, you know, 18 to 30 tracks a day or something along those lines. Like, it's a lot of tracks. Most people will say, okay, I'm going to go to the studio, hit like one or two tracks, and that's it. We can see the work ethic. I remember I had a 16 or I think he was 15 years old. He's older now, but he wanted to be a soccer player. And I was like, find the training schedule for your favorite soccer player. And he found the you know, training regimen. And I said, okay, do that times three. I know times three is a lot, but if you really want it, you would do everything in your power because we can look at what Kobe did. Kobe would work out what's three times a day or four times a day or something along those lines. And when the team came to practice, Kobe was already warmed up. Kobe already practiced. He already trained. And so now he gave himself the mentality of, if you want to cash me, you have to do more than me. But if I see you running at me, I'm running even further and I'm going to make sure I keep on going and I'm going to make sure that you stop before I stop. So no one can ever catch him because he understood that mentality that I'm going to do more. Because I understand if I do more, that right there is going to give me more, more tools to utilize, more energy to spend and to make a difference. And that's what he did, not only on the court, but in his own life with his organizations and everything that he has done. The man's a legacy. That is where we can be. Not saying that we have to be a NBA player or you want to be a football player or, or, you know, like some type of celebrity icon. You don't have to be that in order to be successful. We even talked about that idea in the interview where you can have no money and still be successful. We give ourselves this idea of what we want, success or happiness, and we chase something that might not be for us. We have this idea, maybe that's what we want, but we need to figure out what we truly desire. And I have found that if you just kind of write things down and you kind of think about things and you do things haphazardlessly, you might stumble upon what you need to be doing. But oftentimes, that's not the truth. You need a mentor. You need a guide. It happened for me. Not saying, like I said, it can happen for you by accident. You could be that, you know, small percent that just knows what they need to do. But for most people, they need someone to pinpoint exactly where they are meant to be. No great player in the world, basketball, football, boxing, whatever, right? They had a coach. They had someone looking at what they needed to fix. The coach is on the side of a ring yelling at their boxer, their fighter, whatever, right? Muhammad Ali, do what I say, do this, do this, because they are only seeing what's right in front of them. But yet we're giving them a whole worldview. We're seeing the things that you can't see we are your blind spot sensors, like, on, you know, the things that they have on the cars now where you don't know how to look in your blind spots. But I like technology, but I'm not going to trust it. I'm still going to look. But even then, if we had people in our life and we're not driving because that's probably the worst thing you can ask for someone is, hey, is anyone in my blind spot? Because I remember one time that happened in an accident where the, a girl asked her friend, hey, is anyone in my blind spot? And the girl said, no, you're good to go. And then boom, they crash and the guy hit the light pole and then like it was crazy the car got totaled and everything i had to like talk to the lawyers it was insane we give ourselves this idea that we can trust people and you know who you can trust if you don't you need to look at your character first and then you need to understand what type of characters are in the world because if you think of it in the sense of types of food what type of food don't you like i'm sure there's some type of food that you don't like if there's no food, maybe you were a party goer in like college or something like that, and you drank some alcohol, and every time you smell it, you like, uh, uh. you're like, I don't want that alcohol anymore. That happened for Bacardi with me. I don't want nothing to do with Bacardi. I don't even drink anymore. When I was in college, of course, you have to, you know, test the waters. You have to say, hey, is this for me? And all my friends are doing it. Let me see, you know, what the hype is. And I only did it for probably like six months. And I said, this is not the life that I want. I was literally going downhill, less money and all this, you know, like all of these things. And I say, there has to be a different way. And there was. And that's when I started to focus on my studies and I started to focus on enhancing myself and everything started to elevate. Things started to fall into place when things were falling out of place. We get to make a choice right now. Do we want things to be in place or do we want mayhem to be the rest of our life? 
I know some people like the YOLO lifestyle, but most people don't want the YOLO type results. You want something that you work for, something that you can be proud of, something that you knew was for you, and there is something for you, but you have to be brave enough to go for it. The mindset that comes after is one of omnipotence, is one of power, of certainty, that you can do anything. Your life is yours. So take the reins of life once again and begin to live to who you truly were meant to be. It might not be an easy task. It might be a difficult task. But understand, the end goal is going to be something that you're not going to regret later on. It's going to be something that you're going to be proud of. And it's also going to be a moment where you're going to say, why have I been waiting so long? So stop waiting and take action right now. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coachinginsession at gmail.com. And I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.